Hi everyone, I'm Laura Marion, the Collections Coordinator at Governor's House Library in St. Augustine. Today, I'll be giving a brief presentation on the origins of our library and historic preservation efforts in the nation's oldest city. Our collections at the library were collected and created by the St. Augustine Historic Preservation and Restoration Commission, a state agency that was established by Governor Leroy Collins on June 19, 1959. Their mission was to acquire, restore, and reconstruct homes and historic sites that would both honor and reflect St. Augustine's heritage as a Spanish colonial city. The motivation for this work was largely due to the upcoming 400th birthday, or quadricentennial celebration, of St. Augustine in September of 1965. At this time, its downtown was not particularly distinguishable from other cities in the United States, with modern 20th century structures and paved roads. It's hard to believe that just 60 years ago, cars were allowed to drive on St. George Street. The commission worked for the next 38 years to give St. Augustine the unique historic feel it has today. In their first 10 years of operation, they completed over 30 restoration or reconstruction projects and established the interpretive wing of their work, San Augustine Antiguo. This living history village had a similar look and feel to Colonial Williamsburg, but with a Spanish twist. In 1970, the commission was restructured and changed their name to the Historic St. Augustine Preservation Board. They operated out of Government House, the former United States Post Office located at the top of the Plaza de la Constitución. In Government House, they created exhibition galleries, auditorium space, and a library for the many archaeological and architectural records they had created. In 1997, the Preservation Board was abolished in accordance with Florida's Sunset Act, and at this time, the city of St. Augustine took over the management of their records and properties. In 2010, the city passed the stewardship of the library materials to the George A. Smathers Libraries at the University of Florida and the properties and museum artifacts are now managed by UF Historic St. Augustine Incorporated, a direct support organization of the university. We can divide the Preservation Board's work for each property into four phases, and the first is historical research. They relied heavily on historical documents such as deeds, titles, church records, and maps to complete their projects and collected this information from cultural heritage institutions worldwide from the Library of Congress to the University of Michigan to the Archive of the Indies in Madrid, Spain. Probably the most valuable resources to them were two historic maps, the Puente map of 1764, which is pictured on this slide, and the Roque map of 1788. These two maps were created to provide information on the buildings of St. Augustine, but tell us a great deal about their inhabitants as well. The maps recorded information about the style of buildings, their construction materials, and the owners of the buildings. Using these two maps helps the Preservation Board trace the exact location of 17th and 18th century homes in St. Augustine and continues to be a helpful resource today. The second phase of their work was archaeology. Excavations were completed at each site prior to reconstruction and provided further information on the home's inhabitants. Some of the original foundations were even located, and artifacts from trash pits and gardens helped complete the Preservation Board's understanding of the structure's construction dates and lifetime. This photo shows archaeologist Robert Steinbach piecing together a pot found at an excavation in 1962. The third phase was restoration or reconstruction. Only a handful of the Preservation Board's projects were restorations, meaning the building was still standing and was restored to its colonial appearance. Much of their work was the complete reconstructions of buildings that had been lost from St. Augustine's cityscape for a century or more. In addition to the funding provided by the state, they sourced donations from private citizens and public corporations to complete the work. They tried to use historical construction methods where possible, as well as materials that would have been found in Spanish colonial St. Augustine, like Coquina and Tabby. Most of the buildings they chose to reconstruct were representative of the first Spanish period from 1565 to 1764. This photo shows the construction of the second floor of the Benet store, which stands on St. George Street in 1967. The final phase of the Preservation Board's projects was interpretation. The reconstructed homes were filled with furniture and other decorative artifacts that helped illustrate the daily lives of St. Augustine's colonial residents. Many of the homes had crafts demonstrations to give visitors a sense of historical context, like in this photo where Anne Carling is rolling cigars at the Salcedo House on St. George Street. A significant portion of the items displayed in these house museums are still in our artifact collection today. 
Before I discuss our current library, I'd like to show you some before and after images to give you a sense of the work undertaken by the Preservation Board. Shown here is an image of the Arrivas House taken in the late 1950s prior to its restoration in 1962. This was the first project completed by the Preservation Board. And here is the Arrivas House as it appears today. Next is the site where the Pellicer de Burgo House once stood, shown here in the early 1960s. And here is a photo of the reconstructed duplex shortly after it was finished in the 1970s. Our library today reflects the huge wealth of material amassed by the Preservation Board in their four decades of operation. Today, we have 104 boxes of archival material, 28,000 photographs, 882 maps, over 350 architectural drawings, 1,567 museum artifacts, and over 2,000 printed books. Many of these items are unique to our collection and do not exist anywhere else. Since the UF libraries began working with the collection, we have received three grants to make our materials more accessible to the public. Our most recent grant was completed in June 2019 to create online finding aids for the photographs, maps, and architectural collections. Today, we work with a wide variety of patrons, including the City of St. Augustine's Archaeology Department, Flagler College faculty and students, and the University of Florida's Historic Preservation Program. We support their work to document historic structures throughout St. Augustine by sharing our reports, photographs, and drawings to help them better understand the challenges we face in preserving and protecting St. Augustine's history for future generations. I'll close today's presentation with a quote from the mission of the St. Augustine Historical Preservation and Restoration Commission, which was to acquire, preserve, maintain, reconstruct, reproduce, and operate for the use, benefit, education, recreation, enjoyment, and general welfare St. Augustine's historical and antiquarian sites. Though the manifestation of this mission has evolved since 1959, we feel very fortunate to have the opportunity to educate tourists, locals, and students on the built environment of St. Augustine and help them develop a deeper appreciation of the nation's oldest city. Thank you so much for listening.